and now for the part seven of the Omega Force chapter you all voted on last week to be featured this week. Start that fire back up. Nice work. Okay. <clears throat> Space is a vast, mysterious place destined to be explored forever and never at the same time. We did our share of searching and we found many and we found what many proclaimed to be the solution to all of mankind's problems. Somewhere amongst the infinite amount of celestial objects, a planet was discovered. A planet which we named Araxis. It was a massive world covered in vast oceans and ten continents, each with its own unique biosphere. My fault. From the burning plains of Sirhus to the swamp-covered continent of Hassan, the Terran Republic began to colonize. Together, we built factories and cities, towns and laboratories. All of us had a vision back then. A vision of a world without pain, without misery. We came so close. So close to a world where everyone could be happy. So close to a world unravaged by the pollution that had ruined Earth. So close to a world without war. We were so close, oh god, what is this? Keep it going! Okay, we... <clears throat> Clear comms. We discovered ancient artifacts that jumped our technology several centuries ahead. We developed nanites, curious little things that could be infused into whatever we saw fit. For the first time in, oh my goodness, why? <laughs> the story goes down, the story goes down! The story does not stop! He's back, he's back! <clears throat> For the- oh gosh, why? I'm just gonna go where we left off. <clears throat> I need ammo! We discovered ancient artifacts and jumped our technology several centuries ahead. We developed nanites, curious little things that could be infused to whatever we saw fit. For the first time in the history of time, we made immortality possible. Life was beautiful. Until the Vanu came and fucked it all up. That's okay though, the Omega Force was created for a reason. So, as I was saying, Shane said, if we could just build our prowlers out of the same material that trees are made out of, we would be unstoppable. A good idea, John Arak said, but how can we form, figure out what trees are made out of if every single time we try to sample it, the sampling tool breaks? I think we just need to use something bigger, Shane said. Like what, Johnny Rock asked. Don't you remember what happened to that NC destroyer last month? No, what happened? It fired its ship-based forward railgun at one of those giant avatar-looking trees on Hassan. Oh yeah, and what happened? The round vaporized on impact, releasing all that kinetic energy in one giant explosion. The gunner had his weapons locked for over a month for team killing everyone in a two-click radius. Hot damn. And the tree? Not a scratch. That's bullcrap, Shane said. This whole planet's bullcrap. Indestructible trees, infinitely thin floating lakes. What's next, continent locking? Oh, I wish. And what's up with all these new garage things on Esamir now? I can't hardly get near Sunderers anymore without, like, big walls protecting them. Complain to Nanite Systems. It was their idea. Everything is their idea. This whole war was their idea. And you know what? They've got a monopoly on the whole damn thing. Who even runs that company? Pfft, beats me. All we know is that they sell weapons to all three factions, supply us all with vehicles, and somehow manage to not piss anyone off. I've heard rumors that the Vanu run it. <laughs> the Vanu? Haha, <laughs> you're funny, bro. No, not the Vanu. The Vanu. What, like them alien things that makes all them eggheads moist in the spandex? Yeah. I've heard that the aliens actually didn't die, but they instead faked their disappearance so that they can make a ton of money off the human race. Why would the aliens care about certification points? I don't know, why doesn't it snow on Esamir? I don't know the answer to these things. Things just happen on this planet and no one knows why. There was a long moment of silence during which no soldier spoke. Hey. Yeah? Do you ever feel that... that maybe we're not as in control of this war as we thought? What? 
What do you mean? I don't know. Sometimes I feel... I just feel that I'm not a real person. But that someone, somewhere, is controlling me with a mouse and keyboard. Both soldiers suddenly looked up to see a Sunderer driving across the sky. They watched it as it soared off to the max render distance and then disappeared. Shane and Johnny Rock then returned to their conversation as though nothing had happened. Yeah, I know the feeling. To be continued? Dun dun dun! <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we please kill this fucking Reaver? Yeah, seriously. Nah, we just gotta let it kill us. Like, I wanna shoot it so like fucking it, bad. Like it, yeah.